Welcome back to the third of four sessions focused <clears> on Samurai Wallet, a free and open source non-custodial Bitcoin wallet. I'm Brother Rabbit, hosting this session along with Bitcoin Q&A. Today, we're giving you an introductory overview of Whirlpool, Samurai Wallet's implementation of CoinJoin. By using CoinJoin, you can put a barrier up against your Bitcoin's previous on-chain history. And it also provides you with forward-looking privacy. For example, if I've received Bitcoin from my employer, after I send this through Whirlpool, my boss would have a very hard time deciphering my spending habits, even when looking on the public blockchain. Let's jump into it. Bitcoin Q&A, how are you doing? Good evening, brother. I am very well, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, very good, thank you. Good, good, good. We uh, Let's hope that we aren't plagued with the same uh, technical difficulties as, uh, as the last session. Um, fingers crossed, eh? Uh, you, me both, you, me both. Uh, thanks for joining us in the live chat. Oh, fair few of you guys in here. Right, cool. Let's get it kicked off. Uh, so for those of you that are, this is your first stream and you haven't caught up with sessions one and two, uh, you can do so uh, by going to the Samurai Wallet YouTube channel or you can go to bitcointv.com. Um, both sessions, uh, about an hour long each, um, are, are up there ready for you to watch at whenever you're ready, basically. Uh, so a quick recap for why we are here. Um, Brother Rabbit and I are running these sessions to get back to basics to give uh, a new user uh, look at the Samurai ecosystem, uh, namely the Samurai wallet, uh, the Sentinel watch-only wallet, uh, the privacy-preserving spending tools, uh, the topic that we're covering today, Whirlpool, the Samurai wallet coin join implementation, uh, and the last session is going to be on uh, Dojo, the Samurai wallet backend server. So a quick recap of what we what you missed out on last week, if you haven't seen it, uh, we gave a brief uh, introduction to the concept of a UTXO, an unspent transaction output. Uh, we looked at different uh, types of transactions uh, and how chain analysis will um, uh, apply certain heuristics. Uh, the, the most common one uh, is known as the common input ownership heuristic. Um, and then we, we walked into some of the Samurai spending tools uh, and how those tools can help uh, to thwart against those um, heuristics that the chain analysis firms uh, like to apply on everybody that uses the blockchain. So this week we're doing Whirlpool. Um, so if we go to the next slide, so what is what is Whirlpool? Um, it's a, a type of well, at the base of it, Whirlpool is just uh, a Bitcoin transaction. You know, so that that's all it is really. So, um, but it's a you know it's a or a coin join. Apologies, a coin join is just a, a type of Bitcoin transaction. Whirlpool is a Samurai's implementation of that coin join, and it's a non custodial. Coin join solution uh, using collaborative. It's a collaborative Bitcoin transaction. So, when you uh, you know, go into Whirlpool, you are collaborating with uh, other Whirlpool users to construct that transaction. Um, and in that transaction, there are five participants, um, so five different wallets, uh, constructing together to to uh, to, to make a, a Whirlpool coin join. Um, and Whirlpool has a, a centralized coordinator. So um, this serves as like the, bl the blinded coordinator <coughs> like, that, that organizes five different wallets from oh, you know, five different people to construct this type of transaction. And what does it do? Uh, it breaks links of inputs and outputs. Um, and so, you know, it sort of, as I said in the intro, it sort of puts a barrier up um, uh, or like a line in the sand as to sort of the, the previous history um, of of that, um, that, that, that Bitcoin. It provides you a forward-looking privacy. Um, and uh, as you can see, as an example of, of a Whirlpool transaction on screen. Um, it has a 1,496 interpretations. Um, so within Whirlpool, uh, there are four different pool types um, of different values. Um, we're going to jump in the, into those a little bit later. And the beauty of Whirlpool is you only pay once, and that's when you enter it. Um, uh, that fee is to Samurai for uh, for coordinating the transaction, but um, you know it's a one-off payment when you enter, uh, and uh, you know you can free ride from there. Yeah, I think there's probably just two points there that's probably worth fleshing out just to to um, make ensure that everybody, or particularly new people, uh, understand uh, some of the important concepts. So the top one there, where it says non-custodial, um, th there are there's a, a sort of misconception with some people that. Um, come into say the telegram room start asking questions that they have to sort of send their bitcoin to someone or something um and then hope that they 
get get some sort of uh, I'm using air quotes again uh, some private Bitcoin back. Um, the the whirlpool is structured so that you are never not in control of your coins. Uh, whether you're just entering the pool, whether you've been in the pool for uh, five years, um, there's never a point that you are not in control of all of the funds within your Samurai mm. wallet. I think that's a key one to stress, really, because uh, it can make uh, people a little bit jittery if it's if it's their first time jumping in. Um, and and the other one there, where you know, uh, particularly in Bitcoin, people can get a bit stressed out with the word centralized. Um, it kind of has a negative connotations. Um, the, the the purpose of the coordinator within Whirlpool um, is to like like brother said is to to obviously coordinate the transactions and to organise them together. Um, but the coordinate the coordinator is uh, blinded so that um, they don't see they only see sort of the a bare amount of information required uh, to construct the transaction uh, so that the coordinator cannot. Um, uh, expose the participants i guess yeah i think in you know as you say sort of a non-custodial i think that um when we talk about sort of coin join and um, we often um sometimes use the phrase mixing don't we and that has sort of uh reminders of, of you know a fair few years ago when you used to have these internet services where you'd send your bitcoin to somebody that you, you know you don't know on the internet and they send you some back well but that's not what Whirlpool is, is it? As you have you said said there, Q. You know, you're always in control of your coins from from start to finish. Yeah, definitely. So um, within within Whirlpool uh, and the Samurai Wallet ecosystem, there is a lot of uh, terminology that that we you know, most of which we're going to cover uh, either today or we have already touched on in the previous sessions. So I'm just going to give a, a bit of a high level. Um, just sort of intro to what each of the terms that we're going to be discussing today mean um, but we will be going into a bit more detail on most of these so that we'll all sort of flesh it out for you so that you can uh, gain a better understanding of, of what each of the terminology means so transaction zero put simply is the first transaction that your wallet will make when you uh, enter whirlpool Toxic change is uh, the change output from that transaction zero. So um, we will cover off uh, shortly as to the, the makeup and the flow of Whirlpool. Um, but one of the um, uh, non-negotiables, unfortunately, is that you will have uh, an amount of change when entering Whirlpool, um, and that's called toxic change. Uh, Premix, postmix, uh, these are just two accounts within your Samurai wallet. Um, the, they are sort of the different stages uh, that you can be within the pool, I guess. Uh, remix uh, is kind of a simple one, really. Uh, it's just the case of after you've had your first, your first mix uh, or your first cycle through Whirlpool, any subsequent mix after that is known as a remix. Blinded coordinator, again, I've just covered that one off. Um, pool fee is the fee that you will pay to enter. Uh, you pay this at the time that you on entry only, uh, once you are in the pool, for as long as you stay in that pool, uh, there are no more fees. Uh, miner fee is again, pretty simple. It's the fee uh, on top of the pool fee that is paid to the miner, just as you would with absolutely any Bitcoin transaction. Uh, liquidity is just a, a nominal term given to the amount of Bitcoin currently held within, um, or UTXOs within uh, the Whirlpool uh, liquidity pool, I guess. Free riders are people uh, or entities that have done their first mix that um, are still within, they still have some funds within their post-mix wallet um, and they have a Whirlpool client uh, online uh, uh, which makes them available for remixes. And finally, S-code is essentially just a discount code that the Samurai Wallet developer team uh, will release occasionally to give you discounted pool fees. Wonderful. So let's first of all take you through sort of the start to finish flow of Whirlpool um, and then we'll dive into each of these um, uh, as we go through the presentation. So uh, firstly, you know, you've received Bitcoin um, uh, from from your mate and you receive that into your deposit account within your Samurai wallet. Uh, this is the default account, um, otherwise known as the gray wallet on screen. And you, you should always, well, uh, yeah, you always receive Bitcoin into your deposit account. And from here, this is where you initiate uh, a Whirlpool um, uh, coin join. So from here, you you select um, the coins you want to send into Whirlpool uh, or, you, you, you know, on, on the phone. And uh, you firstly 
trigger a something called a TX0 or T, TX0. Um, and, and this basically breaks your coins up and sends them into premix. Okay, and, and part of, coming out of that TX0 as well, it does two other things. So you're also in, in that same transaction, you're paying um, the pool fee um, to Samurai Wallet for coordinating the transaction. And then also there's another output to that transaction, which as Q mentioned before, is the doxic change. Now this this isn't, oh, Q, oh, geez, just uh, yeah. skip to the end of the, the slides there. <laughs> you don't want to give it away. <laughs> Um, so uh, the um, you've also got your docs exchange from that output of the TX naught, um, and we'll, we'll go into maybe a little bit of this later and how to manage it. But your docs exchange, as Q said, is the the small amount of Bitcoin which which couldn't make it into the premix. So you've done your TX naught, you're now in premix. Um, it's at this point your uh, your Bitcoin is di divided up into um, smaller amounts of uh, of of UTXOs and, and these are the, the pool denominations plus minor fee uh, uh, so from from there after they've been confirmed into that premix you then sat waiting patiently uh, for your first ever mix hence mix one so after a mix is confirmed uh, I'm going to say liquidity here a buzzword from the previous slide after uh, new new liquidity has come into the pool um, you will be selected and you'll get pushed through to post mix your coins will so now you've completed your first mix and you've ended up in your post mix side of your wallet now from here you can spend your bitcoin um, and uh, your bitcoin in post mix is also eligible for remixes and all your utxos in post mix are all equal so we'll go into the pool, size in, pool sizes in two moments, but you'll have a, an amount of UTXOs that have been split up into all equal outputs. Next slide, please, Q. Okay, great. So um, I'm just going to break that down even further now to sort of uh, really drive it home. Um, in terms of the concepts and the flow, uh, we're going to show you uh, shortly what it looks like within the wallet. So for, for the end user, um, but we're just trying to break it down a little bit more. So uh, the first transaction that that TX zero. Uh, so we've got the uh, as you can see on the left hand side here, we've got a single input that is uh, six point nine million sats. Uh, this user has opted to go into the five million sat pool. So they've got an, they've got a single UTXO that is just a little bit larger than the chosen pool size. So this TX0 uh, is going to take the, full, the pool fee out there, which you can see uh, is the first output. Uh, the second output there is the doxic change, so that's what's left over after, after the fees uh, and, and the um, amount, uh, the pool denomination. And then we've got the uh, output number three, which is sent to premix, which as you can see there, hopefully it's coming through on the, on the um, stream okay, is uh, just a tiny bit larger than the chosen pool size, so it's just, it's five million uh, sats and a little bit of change to cover off uh, the minor fees. Uh, so then we're moving on to our first mix. So we've got five inputs here, as is always the case with a whirlpool transaction. Um, obviously, they're they're all uh, around about five million sats, which is the chosen pool. Uh, the the ones with the extra little bit of change there uh, with the ones. These are premixes, so these are the, the entities that are paying for the minor fees for everybody involved in the transaction. That's what that little extra bit of change is. That's to go to the miners of the uh, of the network. Uh, so we've got the five inputs here. So we can uh, distinguish uh, between premixes and remixes. Obviously, the remixes here have got absolutely uh, bob on five million sats. They are the denomination of the pool size. So they've already done a first mix. And then on the output side of the transaction here, as you can see, everybody is absolutely identical. All five outputs are dead on 5 million sats. Um, and these outputs would presumably then uh, be able to go on once they've got a single confirmation on the blockchain to take part in subsequent mixes, which again, all look absolutely identical to what you can see on screen here. Okay, so there's a lot of information on this slide. It's just um, a, an overall view um, of what that flow that I've just walked through um, looks like at, at a wider stage. So looking at more mixes, um, the as you can see here, we've got input number three, which is me entering the pool. 
this is my first mix here, so there's two pre-mixes in this instance, and I'm mixing with three other remixes. Uh, moving down to this box here, we are everybody's identical on the output side, so I could be my original input could be any one of these outputs. Um, and as you can see there, as the tree grows and grows and grows, um, the theory goes that my output, if anybody was wanting to track me on the blockchain, they're going to have to track every single one of these orange circles because there is a um, percentage chance that I could be any single one of them. So it's just a great example really to demonstrate the power of remixing and, and why it's sort of uh, such a good thing to do. Um, in terms of your privacy because every time you remix or any time that um, one of your mixing partners gets a remix you gain um, a certain level of uh, privacy or uh, anonymity from that them taking that step and this 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 um, that's been sort of somewhat simplified if you just go back to the previous slide um, you've got two legs there left and right that 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 um that that those those two legs are coming off the output of your first mix but there is actually another three legs which we're not showing on screen so it just goes to show sort of how sort of complicated and and um complicated is not the right word but how difficult it then becomes to track a single utxo after going into whirlpool yeah it becomes it, it grows exponentially basically the, the number of possibilities mm -hmm. uh, of which output could be you that's great. That's what we like to like to see, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, pool fees. So, as we mentioned before, um, when you enter Whirlpool, you pay a fee to Samurai Wallet for coordinating the transaction. And depending what uh, pool size you enter or select, it depends what uh, fixed fee you you pay uh, to Samurai Wallet. And uh, I won't I won't read them. Uh, line by line but they're on screen as you can see and, and just to hammer this one home is that it's a fixed fee um, and sort of no, no matter how much you send into to samurai there's a slight caveat there because there is a, a maximum amount you can send per uh, entrance to a whirlpool transaction but you know in in sort of <laughs> sort of normal sort of speaking terms i guess um you know it's uh there's no maximum sort of level um or no max sort of uh a fee you're going to pay if you like so how do you choose a pool now this this one is very uh gets gets asked a lot um in sort of the telegram chats and, and channels and it is <clears throat> really it always comes down to sort of what are your needs but hopefully using this information in front of you, you you might be able to to sort of help you best choose so the considerations you have to have when when picking a pool size is the number of utxos that are, are going to be generated um after you've you've well pulled um your spending habits after well pull um so often some people uh, like to to go for a, a larger size pool because they find perhaps next week they're going to spend a, uh, a a large amount of bitcoin they don't want to go into a really small pool to split their utxos up into say 59 pieces to then spend them all next week again and recombine them so depending on your spending habits you know we like to often have uh, you know varying amounts of change in our wallet that we carry around in our back pocket well i'm not going to buy a stick of chewing gum um with a you know with a 50 pound note i'm going to use a, a you know a smaller maybe like a pound coin same principle applies for for a well pool but sometimes it could be a little bit more difficult planning oh i don't quite know what i what i'd like to do or spend in the future so that's just something to bear in mind another thing to consider is depending on what pool size you enter obviously depends how many um how many utxos um, are going to be generated from well pool um, and the more UTXOs that are, are generated, um, usually the higher the, well, no, the, higher, the higher the minor fees because the, the transaction costs become more at a minor level. Um, and then where, the, the first thing that, that, that uh, I think any of us say, say, say when you know, someone's asking, oh, wh where, do I, uh, where do I start with choosing a pool is, to go to um, Bitcoin Q and A's, one of Bitcoin Q and A's many websites um, called BitcoinFees.com, and this allows you to, to get an estimate of well, I've got this amount of Bitcoin. What if I? And it gives you a breakdown of 
of uh you know the, the sort of how much fee you'd pay depending on what pool you're going. So on screen here, there's three examples. You've got uh, the mix amount, say I wanted to mix was 0.6 Bitcoin. Um, there's three different pools that I'm eligible. Um, well, there's actually four pools you're eligible with that amount. But for this purpose of this example, there's three pools on screen. 0.5 Bitcoin uh, pool, 0.05 and 0.01. Now, depending on what pool I went into, that would either break my 0.6 Bitcoin into one UTXO, 11 UTXOs, or 59 UTXOs, with all varying amounts of, of change, the, the Bitcoin change, which couldn't make it into, um, into Whirlpool. Um, and that's what we, often we call the, the doxic change. So again, it's, it, it, there's not sort of one hard rule as to which pool you should go into. Uh, some people like to pick the, the largest size pool, um, in this example, the 0 0.5 Bitcoin. And you can see that they've got a, a, a change amount after that transaction of 0 0.08. Well, 0 0.08, you could put that into the 0 0.01 pool and get sort of uh, seven UTXOs back out of that one. And this is called like the trickle down method. Is there anything I've missed there, Q? No, I think you covered that beautifully. Just a, co a quick correction for anybody that's listening and not watching the stream. Oh, please. You said uh, the website's bitcoinfees.com, but it's uh, whirlpoolfees.com. Okay. Otherwise, yeah, it was perfect. You. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. So um, just to kind of build on top of that, that brothers just ran through, just another quick example, really. Um, let's say you had 4.5 million sats. Um, uh, you've got two choices which pool you could enter. You could enter the 1 million sat pool or the 100,000 100, sat pool. Uh, those are going to re result in you either getting four post-mix UTXOs with the uh, example of the 1 million sat pool or 44 um, post-mix UTXOs. So you can see there's a quite a big difference there um, between the, the, two pool, the two pools and the, the sort of um, makeup of your post-mix wallet, uh, depending on which pool that you choose. Um, so again, just to drive home, um, use whirlpoolfees.com just to have a play around with the different pool sizes and different mix amounts um, because it can create quite a drastic difference in uh, the makeup of your Postmix wallet and, and also the minor fees that you're going to be paying for um, your transaction zero, you know, when you're entering uh, Whirlpool. Yeah, certainly. And uh, I think that maybe it's best place to say now that you, know, you don't have to dive in really deeply. The, the, the nice thing about Samurai um, wallets with Whirlpool is that, you know, the, the smallest size pool is uh, 0.001 Bitcoin. So the sort of barrier to entry to sort of get your first mix done with us, maybe, a, you know, a sort of small level, a small amount of Bitcoin and just try it out, you know, and then that way you don't have to um, you know, make the mistakes the first time you can sort of go, Oh, I wish I hadn't, hadn't have done that, you know, with, with, or, you know, I wish I hadn't have done that of all my Bitcoin. I wish I'd have done it this way. Well, if you start off with like a, start off with a small amount of Bitcoin, you know, you can, you can come back to it later. Uh, you know, should you want to, you want to put any more, any more back through. Yeah. And just to reiterate, uh, in terms of dipping your toes in, um, if you wanted to just test, do a little test mix, um, on, on mainnet, uh, with a little under 100,000 sats, um, the cost to enter the Whirlpool is just 5,000 sats. So it's really not a lot uh, of change to sort of um, just to get a feel for uh, what the process looks like. So it's, um, like you say, quite a low barrier to, to entry. Most certainly. So uh, how can you, how can you whirl, ways to whirl? Um, so I think we're, we're, we're We've all come to Whirlpool initially from mobile. So you have the ability to, to uh, initiate Whirl Whirlpool from your mobile. Very convenient, isn't it? Um, there's also the uh, desktop GUI. You can initiate a Whirlpool mix from desktop. And a little bit more, uh, uh, more, more complex is you can also link it to your own node. Uh, so this is the Whirlpool, uh, the desktop GUI plus the Whirlpool CLI command line interface on your own node uh, and is sort of like a, a sort of a bit of a progression to that which will break break down in a, a few slides time yeah just to to reiterate another common misconception um that the mobile wallet is the is the prerequisite for everything else uh, you can't just download the desktop app you you need the um 
the mobile wallet first. Uh, that will become clear in a sec when, when uh, Brother takes us through how to pair the two together. I uh, just thought it's worth driving that home that the, you need the Android app first. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. So we're just going to have a look at the quick pros and cons as to why you might choose a specific method uh, to mix. So the lowest barrier to entry, obviously, mobile mixing. Um, it provides you with automatic toxic change management. So when you uh, initiate a transaction zero or you enter Whirlpool, uh, the wallet will give you a quick pop-up and it will tell you that you've got X amount of change. Uh, do you want to mark that as do not spend? Uh, we did cover that in week one, I think, uh, but it's, it's kind of like a, a nice little fail safe there that's built up within the wallet to um, sort of uh, hide that from your view so that you don't um, unwittingly mix it with uh, any other sort of bits of Bitcoin that you might want to keep it separate from. Uh, another bonus uh, or pro for uh, mobile mixing, you can start mixing from anywhere. Obviously, um, if you were to um, do a peer to peer sale, um, receive uh, or buy, sorry receive some Bitcoin and you wanted to mix it straight away, you don't have to wait till you get home. You can mix it there and then, there and then at the, at the side of the street. Um, your f obviously, the, the nature of that that you can mix from anywhere um, is that if you need to get some private Bitcoin and you wanted to just do a single mix before making a spend that you needed some privacy for, that's going to happen um, relatively quickly on the mobile app. Um, Again, it's just a couple of taps. We're going to take you through the full process in a minute. Um, and finally, uh, Whirlpool allows you, sorry, mobile mixing allows you to um, merge any type of address, uh, address type when entering um, entering Whirlpool. So if you've got some UTXOs that you've received to a, a legacy address, one that starts with one, um, or a um, wrap segwit address uh, that starts with a three, um, you can mix those or co combine them together with native SegWit BEC32 uh, addresses that start with BC1, which are the common, most common type that you'll see within the wallet. Um, you can merge all three of those together uh, when entering Whirlpool. The, the wallet doesn't, um, doesn't, uh, doesn't really care which, which type that you use. Uh, so, so some of the cons to mobile mixing. Um, for the Whirlpool service to... Um, be active, you need to keep the phone awake. Um, now, certain uh, distributions of Android can make that quite difficult because they tend to have um, some uh, economy settings, I guess, to, to preserve the battery. Uh, the fallout from that is that it likes to kill um, background processes, which uh, the Whirlpool service is one. Um, so you just need to kind of keep the keep hopping back in and out of the app just to make sure that it stays awake long enough so that you can get that first mix. Um, and obviously that doesn't lend itself that well to, you know, if you wanted to, you had a mixed target of, say, uh, seven remixes. Uh, that's going to be a, a bit of a task to keep your phone awake uh, for that length of time to, to achieve all of those remixes. Um, and finally, there's less <clears throat> mix control. So uh, currently um, the wallet, uh, the, sorry, the mobile version of Whirlpool, uh, it's, it's more difficult than the desktop app to see how many uh, mixes or remixes each of your uh, UTXOs have had, um, which is where the, the sort of desktop app uh, comes into its own, which Brother's going to cover, cover off for us now. Yeah, so the, the cons of the Whirlpool, uh, sorry, the cons of the, the mobile mixing are, are solved by uh, the desktop GUI application. Um, so the pros being that you, you have a on screen, you, you know, have a, a greater um, detail of uh, the mi uh, at the amount of mixes um, that you're you're getting, whether that be initial mixes or remixes. Um, you know, it's a lot easier to keep your uh, your desktop application um, sort of alive and kicking to ensure that um, you know you're having your 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 remixing remixing sort of ticking over. Um, you can use the um, Whirlpool uh, desktop application to deposit Bitcoin. Um, so say if you're working on your computer uh, and you wanted to receive Bitcoin from, from uh, somebody or something, um, you can generate address within the Whirlpool desktop GUI. Um, but what you can't do, and we put it in a pro, I think it's a pro in this sense, and um, what you can't do from the Whirlpool desktop GUI is you can't spend so some people see that as a, a, a negative. Personally, I see that as a, a, a positive in this instance. Um, and what this also means is that because the Whirlpool desktop GUI um, is taking care of your uh, mixes, um, you can turn your phone off. You know, you don't, you don't have to even keep the, the, the app locked. You can just um, completely turn your phone off and put it in your drawer. Now, the cons to Whirlpool desktop 
um, GUI is that you can um, only view, uh, to my understanding, um, SegWit addresses only. So that's BEC32 addresses, which start with BC1. So that's a con, but as uh, Q&A described before, you can view them in the mobile. So for that, for that one, what I would do is I would initiate my mix in the mobile and then turn my phone off and, and let, it, let it run on the desktop. Uh, another con is there is if you've received Bitcoin through um, a, a Paynim transaction, um, a Coots transaction um, that we covered in last week's session, um, these these transactions won't be displayed on your Whirlpool desktop GUI. Um, so yeah, so again, that's another reason why to maybe initiate your uh, initial mix on your mobile. Uh, there's no change marking um, on your Whirlpool desktop GUI. Um, so when you, you know, once you, you get that doxic change, that doxic change from your TX0 um, is still associated with, with your Bitcoin's previous history. So you, you, you can't, you don't have the ability to create labels within the desktop app. Um, you must keep the GUI awake, um, you know, in, in order to, so, so the, uh, your Bitcoin goes from uh, premix to postmix and then to remix. Um, so that that can be seen as a con because you know you've got to keep your possibly your screen on your laptop, or you know your, your computer running all the time, um, and uh, yeah, again we've we've put it in the cons as well. But there is no there is it's a pro and a con. There's no spendability. Um, is there anything I've I've missed there? I, I we're gonna we're gonna go through I think um, just after this as to how to set this up. But for for now, I think that's a good overview. Yeah, just one correction and one question really. The quick correction okay. you, you mentioned that. Um, the outputs. Oh no, I've been corrected by the intern. <laughs> <laughs> the the, uh, the outputs that you receive from Coots tra Cahoots transactions, they'll be visible within the uh, within the desktop app. It's only uh, direct payments um, f that don't use Cahoots that come from another painting that you won't be able to see, and that's just just because ah. of the, the nature of uh, the requirement for for private keys to generate the addresses. That's all. Oh, okay, and the, the quick question for the benefit of uh, uh, of everybody listening. Um, which has just completely gone out of my head now. Um, oh, yeah, it's come back. So um, if I was to start a, if I've got this setup that's on screen now, I've got my phone and I've, so I've got some wallet on my phone, I've got the desktop uh, GUI on my computer. If I mm -hmm. was to um, start a mix on my phone and then close my phone, um, do I essentially, does the desktop app just take over? Is that is that how it works? Uh, yes, that's exactly how it works my knowledge so just uh, so I, just, I feel like it's a, it's a trick question no no not at all not at all i just wanted to spell it out for people so you, yeah, they'd start definitely. start the mix on the mobile wallet uh the that would um automatically pop up on the desktop app and then kind of um you know say to the phone yep yeah, i'll take it from here you can switch yourself off yeah that's exactly exactly what I do. exactly what i do perfect okay right so uh moving on to the more sort of power user option i guess uh is the command line um implementation and uh, so the command line implementation probably uh, will cover off when we do dojo and in, in the next session um however essentially what it with most of the full node packages so um running dojo um umbrel my node um or just plain old um vanilla uh, dojo um they come packaged with the command line tool that um essentially will manage all of your remixes for you um so because the uh, command line um, implementation is designed to run on sort of Raspberry Pis or, or any hardware that is designed to be left on 24-7, um, it kind of manages your remixes 24-7. Um, so what that means for the end user is that you're always available um, to uh, be selected for a remix. Um, so once you've set it up, like again, like the screen says there, you can set it and forget it, and it will just sort of manage uh, on your behalf with no more user input. So you don't need your phone switched on, you don't even need the uh, desktop app to be open. Um, once that first setup is done, um, the command line will take over, um, and it's kind of like the, the ultimate, I guess. The uh, couple of cons to it, obviously it's the most complex setup. Um, the setup varies um, depending on the implementation that you're running uh, and that's why we, we're not covering any great detail here because they do have their own um, kind of um, uh, different steps I guess 
Um, and the other con, again, a bit more of a technical one, but if the device that's running the command line interface um, uh, has a, a power outage or a restart, then you do need to remember to go back into the desktop application just to unlock it and, and start the, the uh, mix process all over again. Wonderful. So I, th I think we sort of we sort of mentioned during during each of those uh, overviews that there is a, like a natural progression um, to getting into Whirlpool. You know, you do have the ability um, to to just use the mobile only. Uh, you know, and you can you can test it out as, as Q said, and uh, you know, quite a, you know, use the small small pool, and you know, there's sort of a very low barrier to entry just to get going. Uh, the second step being you use your mobile plus the Whirlpool desktop app. Um, so, uh, you know, there's great remixability with this um, and, you know, you can turn your phone off. Uh, and then you've got the third and the fourth step, which is like the power user. So you've got your mobile, uh, you've got your Whirlpool desktop GUI app, and then you've got the Whirlpool CLI, which is managed by your own node. So the benefit of that, as Q says, you get. 24 seven remixing um, and you know you, you can start the start the mobile uh, start the mix on the mobile or from within the um, desktop GUI application and then your node takes over <clears throat> with the whirlpool CLI and you can you can just let it run and it will mix for you and remix yeah I think it's a really nice um, you know step-by-step -step process where you can really sort of get a feel for for what mixings uh, like um, by just literally downloading an app on your phone, sending some sats to it, and then you can, you know, it, it's once you start scratching under the surface that you know there's loads of guides out there, things like Ronin Dojo's, you know, the documentation is um, it, it's really well documented. So when you want to take the next steps, um, the it's actually not as difficult as some of the terminology might make it sound. Okay, so moving on to. So now I'm just going to take you through uh, what your first mix would look like. Um, if you've never done it before, you've just downloaded the Samurai Wallet, you sent some Bitcoin in there. So I'm just going to take you through there just to show you how simple it is. So you've sent some sats, and I'm working left to right for everybody watching. Uh, so you've sent some sats into your Samurai Wallet. Uh, you're going to tap the floating action button, which is the blue button in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, you're going to tap Whirlpool. That will open the Whirlpool uh, client on your phone. Uh, you can then tap Mix UTXOs. You'll then be presented with a list of all of your UTXOs, which as we discussed last time are basically the, the chunks of Bitcoin held within your wallet. Now, if you're just starting out, the chances are you're going to have a much shorter list than what you can see on screen here. But in any case, you'll be able to see um, all of those there. So you can then choose, uh, once you've gone through the process that we outlined before about choosing which pool you want to go into, uh, you can then choose which piece of Bitcoin you want to add to the pool based on how much you'd like to mix. So just before you go any further, Q, um, yeah, on the on the screen here, you've you've got you know you're selecting which UTXOs you'd like to to send into Whirlpool. Well, why why would you choose to select say um, a couple of them instead of all of them? So again, that kind of just comes down to how much um, how much Bitcoin you want mixed at that any one time. Um, the absolute mm -hmm. cheapest way to do that, I guess, would be to mix it all. Uh, together um, because like we stressed earlier you, you it, it's a fixed pool fee uh, so if i was to select one of those utxos and enter the one million sat pool i'm still going to pay the same pool fee as selecting all of those um, utxos and entering that same one million sat pool and um, so it, it just comes down to priorities of uh, do i want to um, pay the lowest amount of fees as a percentage of what i'm mixing or do i just um, I know the history of all of the different pieces of Bitcoin and I might not want to merge them all together at the same time. Um, so I might want to enter the pool at different times with different pieces of Bitcoin based on where they might have come from. Perfect. Okay, so I'll carry on. So we've chosen, so we've sent some sats into our Samurai wallet. We've uh, opened Whirlpool. We've chosen which UTXOs that we want to mix. Uh, we're then going to be um, met with um, which pool that we want to join. Uh, so that is again 100,000 sat, 1 million, 1 million sats, 5 million sats or 50 million sat pool. Um, obviously if you don't have, you haven't selected enough Bitcoin to enter the larger pool, that option won't be available to you at that, at that time. Uh, and then you will be able to select your cycle priority. That's essentially the minor fees that you're going to pay based on how quickly uh, you want the first mix to happen. You'll then be shown a breakdown of all of the fees. Uh, so you'll have your minor fee, 
uh, your pool fee um, and any change outputs that you know the value of the change output that um, is left over after uh, all of those other fees have been taken out um, and then you'll just the final step you'll be asked if you want to uh, as I covered earlier whether you want to mark your doxic change uh, as unspendable all that will do is it won't make it visible uh, or selectable um, when you do any future transactions you can change that status at any time if you want to go and spend that bitcoin it's just a bit of a fail safe so that you don't kind of forget about it and then in three months time uh, merge it with another utxo that might uh, degrade your privacy somewhat so finally, we've, we've started that mix. Uh, you'll see in the uh, Whirlpool screen on your phone um, that you've got, um, depending on the, the makeup of your mix and how much you selected or which pool uh, you chosen to join, that they are all in pre-mix waiting to be selected for their first mix. So they'll all be mixed uh, independently of one another, again, to preserve your privacy. Um, so that will, you'll, you'll see them sort of start to reduce one by one as each one gets selected for its first mix. And then finally, uh, so long as you keep that Whirlpool client active, that, like we touched on earlier, so basically just keeping the app open on your phone, um, you will they'll all slowly trickle through into the postmix section of your wallet. Um, all of that is managed for you, so as soon as you hit um, broadcast on that initial transaction, uh, that transaction zero, uh, the phone will do the rest. All you've got to do is, is just keep that app open on your phone um, and the, the, the wallet will handle everything else. Perfect. So you've done your first uh, mobile mix and the next step is to, oh, I might want to try the Whirlpool desktop app. So this, uh, this next few slides is going to be how to pair to your um, Whirlpool desktop app. So first of all, you've got to download it from somewhere. So um, you go to samuraiwallet.com, uh, click on the download section, and then you can download it for whatever, whatever operating system you're on. Uh, and in this instance, because we're just using, uh, for this demonstration, we're just using a, uh, a mobile phone and the desktop app, we're going to select standalone GUI and press continue. Uh, so next, what you need to do is you need to go to your uh, Samurai Wallet app on your phone and you go to the settings area, transactions, uh, scroll down to the bottom and hit pair to Whirlpool GUI. And it's going to present uh, to you on screen a QR pairing code which you can use uh, to hold up to your computer's webcam um, to pair with the uh, desktop app. Now, if that's uh, not possible, you're using maybe an old computer or you've disabled uh, the, the webcam for whatever reason, uh, you also have the ability to copy to clipboard um, and then you can you can use a method of your choice to, to move that, that, that um, pairing payload um, over to your computer. Um, so that you're linking your uh, Whirlpool GUI um, with your Samurai Wallet phone app. Ah, there you go. So uh, you're presented with this screen on the Whirlpool um, desktop app. Uh, you would, to scan the QR code, you just you select the, the QR symbol on, on screen, or you would paste in the, uh, the pairing payload. And uh, hey presto, Whirlpool set up. And it gives you the option on screen to uh, enable Tor. Um, which I think we've mentioned in previous sessions, we always recommend doing this because um, by routing your um, traffic over the Tor network, it hides your IP address. <clears throat> so recommend to uh, set that on and then hit continue, uh, initialize GUI. Now, you're going to be presented with this next screen and uh, you need to enter in your Samurai Wallet passphrase to unlock the GUI. So, uh, your Samurai Wallet is, um, you have 12 words plus a passphrase for your Samurai Wallet, and that gives you access to all your Bitcoin. To unlock the Whirlpool GUI, you just need the passphrase. So this is the, uh, the passphrase you set when you uh, initially set up the wallet, um, which, you know, is, is a custom passphrase. And you can even, if you want to, you can even check, check that passphrase if you go into the troubleshoot area of the settings in the wallet. Okay, and so now you're paired, uh, you will see uh, uh, an exact um, uh, mirror of uh, your Samurai wallet. So it will show you um, your deposit account and all the Bitcoin um, within that deposit account, with the exception to uh, non bec 32 um, uh, addresses. So 
Sorry, I was uh, just waiting to unmute myself there. So yeah, so <laughs> brother's just taken us through the um, the initial setup process. So I'm just going to take you through now how you would um, do a mix um, on the desktop app uh, aside from the, the, the phone app. So we've got the mirror image of our Samurai wallet there. Uh, we've got the deposit account uh, open, which you can see on the, the tab on the left hand side. So it's very similar. You're going to start to see some similarities now of between the mobile app um, and the desktop GUI. So we can select um, all of the UTXOs that we want to include into our um, transaction or TX0 or to send into Whirlpool effectively. So you can there's, there's a tick box down the left hand side, so you can toggle uh, any number of those based on um, which pool you want to enter and how much you want to mix. Once you've done that, you can select premix. Here again, very similar to the phone app, you're going to be um, faced with a decision to say which pool that you want to use um, and which minor fees you want to set, again based on how quickly you want the uh, initial transaction to be processed. Once you've done that, again you can select premix, the red button, and the uh, initial transaction will then be broadcast for you. Um, so as you can see now, we're now in the premix account. So um, the initial transaction has sort of divided up all of the um, pieces of Bitcoin based on the pool that we want to uh, want to enter. They're waiting for a confirmation on the blockchain. Um, and once they have that, um, they will then uh, flow through after their first mix into the post mix tab. Um, here, they will sit for ever and a day basically. Um, and as long as you've got this desktop uh, GUI open, um, the um, the software will manage uh, all of your remixes for you. So as long as this is open, you'll be eligible to be uh, selected. Uh, and like you say there, you can just let it ride and your um, forward-looking privacy will grow um, with each and every remix that you and or any of your partners uh, take part in. So that brings us on to uh, top tips. Uh, just a quick reminder for anybody who's joined us in the live chat, if you've got any questions, please start dropping them in now. Um, so the first top tip um, goes back to sort of week one, really, where we introduced you to be able to you know, label all your UTXOs and um, you know, your doxic change isn't any different to that. So your, your doxic change, which is the small amount of Bitcoin that, that can't go into Whirlpool because it's not large enough, um, that, that is still linked to the your previous its previous history. So when you get that warning on screen after entering Whirlpool, you know, it's a good idea to, to mark that as unspendable uh, and then also um, to go into your, your UTXOs and, and possibly, you know, consider um, uh, adding an extra label to it um, if you'd like to. Um, and then uh, the second point is, uh, and Q did cover it earlier, but um, when you enter Whirlpool, just remember you are you are doing a you know that is a you are doing a Bitcoin transaction. So you've got to be um, somewhat so what considerate of which UTXOs um, you merge together when entering Whirlpool, because um, these UTXOs by nature of the transaction will be inherently linked together upon entry into Whirlpool. So if you've got say three UTXOs which you don't want to be linked together. And, but you want to send them into Whirlpool, you you would then choose, you, uh, you should consider choosing to, to send them into Whirlpool separately. Uh, that's sort of a way to, to work around that one. Yeah, so the next point, let it ride. Again, it's just what I've just covered off really. Um, this is especially prevalent if you've got the GUI and or the CLI set up. Um, remixing in Samurai, in Whirlpool is absolutely free. Uh, you pay on entry, so you're incentivized thereafter to um, sit there uh, and let your privacy grow uh, by taking part in remixes um, at absolutely zero extra cost to you. Uh, another one we touched on earlier was to start small. Um, you know, don't be afraid to dip your toes into the 100,000 sat pool. It's only going to cost you 5,000 sats in fees to figure out if this is for you and if you like it um, and to, to sort of get comfortable uh, with, the, with the process uh, of using Whirlpool. Perfect. Uh, now, a, a question that is always asked in uh, the support channels and whatnot is, um, you know, when SCODE, uh, you know, when when discount code for Whirlpool? Um, so 
best advice is look out for them. If you're if you're sort of you're well pulling on a on a on a regular basis, then you'll you'll likely be familiar with the, the sort of the Telegram channels and and the, the Twitter channels and whatnot. So just keep your eyes out. Uh, perhaps uh, Samurai Wallet will will feel uh, you know somewhat generous. Um, you know, quite off, <laughs> somewhat generous every now and again. So, um, you know, they'll release a SCO discount code for um, Whirlpool, which gives you a discount on the fixed uh, the fixed fee. Uh, as mentioned before, um, check out whirlpoolfees.com. Uh, here, it gives you a bit of a simulation of, um, you know, which pool to choose, um, how much it costs, what's the proportion of minor fees to fixed fees, and gives you a good breakdown of how many UTXOs um, are, are generated as, as part of what pool size you, you choose. Yeah, last two. Um, those of you that have seen the first uh, couple of streams will have heard this one before, but um, and I'm going to get a copyright from Diverter in the chat probably for saying use the tools. Um, we, we're still in a low fee environment. Um, so again, like, like I stressed before, that 100,000 sat pool costs just 5,000 sats to enter. Um, just get comfortable with it, have a play around um, and, and just um, get used to using these tools before you sort of dive in at the deep end and think about mixing your entire stash. Um, and lastly, again, don't be afraid to ask any questions. The Samurai Wallet community is one of the best, if not the best uh, in the space. There is literally always somewhere, somebody uh, available to help out with any questions that you have um, and hopefully these streams as well will go um, some way to um, answering some of the basics. Perfect and talking of questions um, I think we've got a few that's popped up in the chat so if you haven't if you've got some questions you haven't asked them already please uh, just drop them in there. Uh, the first question uh, Q is does Samurai Wallet have access to any uh, of the UTXO labeling data a user has entered into their Samurai wallet? Uh, no, as far as I know, and hopefully the intern will correct me here, but it's all stored locally on the device um, in an encrypted fashion. So no, they don't see any of that information. Oh, that's good to know. Uh, there's another question here as well. Um, you know, I've, I've mentioned before about marking uh, doxic change as um, unspendable or do not spend. There's a question here, Q, is what, what can you do with Doxic Change? Is it possible to, to you know, use that separately to, to send into Whirlpool? Should I merge it with anything else to send into Whirlpool? Um, you know, what, what can I do with my Doxic Change? Yeah, so I'm going to do a quick self shill here that's got the long form answer to that question um, at bitcoiner.guide slash Doxic. Um, but the TLDR, um, if it's large enough to go into one of the smaller pools, that's probably the best approach. Um, but eventually you're going to end up with an amount that is um, too small to get into even the smallest uh, pool. So what you do with that uh, then essentially is to is kind of a personal decision. Um, you can absolutely merge it with um, other UTXOs um, to, to go back into Whirlpool. And this is where the labeling piece uh, comes into uh, into its own, really, so that you can make an educated decision so to say that is it the right thing to do for me to mix um, that change output, which I know came from um, a peer to peer purchase with uh, an output that I've just got from when buying on Coinbase. Um, the answer to that, in my opinion, will be no. Um, but without having those robust labels, you're not going to be able to make those sorts of decisions. There are some. Um, other um, more technical um, approaches to dealing with those uh, which are covered off in the guide I've just mentioned earlier but the, the, the easy option is uh, to send it back through if you can. Perfect, wonderful. So I don't think we've got any, any more questions. There, um, there was, is there anything you'd like to end on? Yeah, there was one more that you missed off that was from earlier in, oh, the, in the chat. Cool. Um, somebody was just asking how they... Um, I'm just trying to find it now. How do they... Um, use the SCO, where do they put it? Um, so if you open the Whirlpool um, section of the Samurai Wallet um, and you tap the three dots at the t in the top right, there'll be a button there for Whirlpool S code. Um, all you need to do is, ty is type it in there, uh, hit OK for it to be saved, and then that will be applied um, when you uh, do your next mix. Perfect, wonderful. So. Uh Thanks very much, Q. Uh, should we round it off? Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. That was a pleasure again, mate. Thank you very much. Wonderful. So 
Thank you very much for listening. Uh, and as always, a special thanks to those who joined us in the live chat. If you're listening to this uh, on catch up, consider joining us on Telegram for the final of these sessions, where we'll be giving you an overview of Dojo, the Bitcoin full node implementation to back your Samurai wallet. This will be the final piece in the puzzle for you to have uh, the ultimate privacy stack. As when running your own node, you don't have to rely on any third party with your wallet information. You can validate all your incoming transactions and allows you to whirlpool 24 seven. We'll see you poolside. Thank you.